Francis Patterson is the Public Law Commissioner for England and Wales. Now, the Law Commission is the statutory independent body responsible for keeping the law under review and recommending reform where it's needed to the government of the day. Each of the commissioners leads a team of lawyers and research assistants responsible for a particular area of the law. Francis Patterson leads the team responsible for the scrutiny of public law, which is the sphere of law that deals with the state and its relations with individuals. The projects that she has in hand at present include the modernization and simplification of electoral law, a review of the regulatory framework surrounding health and social care professionals, and an examination of the law that governs wildlife management. On a smaller scale, she is also reviewing the legislation that regulates level crossings and the legal framework that relates to taxis and private hire vehicles and the legislation relating to data sharing. Last year, she was responsible for the final report to the government on the reform of adult social care law. A draft bill to implement the recommendations of that report was announced in this year's Queen's speech. What these projects have in common are the interests of everyone who lives here, including wild animals as well as humans. Now, how, you may wonder, does one become a law commissioner? In the case of Francis Patterson, the career path begins here at the University of Leicester, where she graduated in history. Her personal tutor, and tutor in her special subject of mid-Victorian history, was Jack Simmons, one of the founding professors of the university. In those days, long before the emergence of careers offices, it was professors who recommended careers for their undergraduates, and Professor Simmons decided that young Francis should enter publishing. Francis demurred because she had decided to become a barrister. She had been interested in reading law when she was at school, but had been put off by her teachers on the grounds that no member of her family had ever been in the legal profession. On graduation from Leicester, Francis therefore went off to London, joined Middle Temple, and studied at the College of Law, where she read for the bar. Even at that stage, there were signs that she was destined to have a career of great distinction. At the Middle Temple, she was the Campbell Foster Prize winner, and she was a recipient of a Winston Churchill Pupillage Award. Frances began her pupillage in London and completed it at what became King's Chambers, centered in Manchester and Leeds. She was taken on as a tenant in those chambers, then the only woman tenant, and 25 years later became its head of chambers. Through those decades specializing in town and country planning, environment law, compulsory purchase and compensation, and highways matters. Along the way, she was appointed Queen's Counsel, or as lawyers say, took silk. Later, she was elected as a bencher of the Middle Temple, that being the way that the inns of court honor the distinguished contributions of their finest barristers. She was appointed as a recorder of the Crown Court and as a deputy high court judge. In one aspect of her career, she has also fulfilled Professor Simmons' intention that she should go into publishing, in that Francis is consultant editor of and contributor to Judicial Review, Law and Practice, which is published by Jordans, and she is a consultant editor of Jordan's Public Law Online. Now, Frances Patterson's professional life has centered on planning, environmental law, and public law. She has variously acted for and against housing, leisure, and retail developers, including Sainsbury, Tesco, the National Grid, BP, and in the higher education world, the University of York, where she helped the university gain planning permission for an entirely new campus, thereby giving the university the potential to double its size. She played an important part in public inquiries, such as the Manchester Second Runway, which was the subject of environmental protests, and the Trafford Centre, the subject of a legal battle that went to the Court of Appeal and then the House of Lords. These are enterprises that give rise to strong feelings and heated emotions. 
and those involved are fortunate to have the knowledgeable involvement of Francis Patterson, who is alert both to commercial imperatives and to impact on ordinary citizens. Francis's expertise in difficult inquiries was recognized by her appointment as chair of an independent inquiry mounted by a health authority into the failings of agencies involved in the protection of a five-year-old girl stabbed to death by her schizophrenic mother. Francis Patterson's legal work only once brought her to Leicester. Barrett's planned a housing development down by the river, and the issues with which Francis had to contend included the presence of pylons on the development layout. Now, this encounter with our electricity infrastructure did not bring her into contact with the university, as our assets do not include pylons. The renewed link instead came through an alumni dinner in London, one of the most fruitful initiatives of our enterprising vice chancellor. The goodwill generated by that evening led Francis to accept an invitation to return to the campus to give a lecture in the School of Law. She arrived to see what she rightly described as a transformed university campus. We have long been a fine university, and the changes wrought in recent years means that our architecture and ambiance are now correspondingly fine. We are immensely proud that Francis is associated with our past and that she is now associated with the university that we have become. Mr. Vice-Chancellor, on the authority of the Senate and the Council, I present to you Francis Patterson that you may confer upon her the degree of Doctor of Laws. I admit you to the degree of Doctor of Laws and welcome you among us again. Many congratulations. First of all, thank the university for the very kind words that have been said on my behalf. Uh, can I next of all say how very odd it is to be back where, in the same room where I graduated many, many years ago. Uh, so my experience is something from which you can draw lessons, I suppose to necessarily learn, but you can draw lessons. What that means is that I can therefore identify with each and every one of you who is to graduate this morning. But what about my time at Leicester? You've heard about the achievements. When I was here, I confess, I was really keen on going out and having a good time. <laughs> that took place either here and indeed, apart from my graduation, the last time I was here was with David Bowie. How often can one say that in a speech? <laughs> Other than that, I was in the previous existence of the Percy G building. I did a bit with Ripple, which I understand is still the university newspaper. I trod the boards under the aegis of what was then the University Humanities Society. I know not whether that still exists, but I was cast there, first as a heroine in a silent movie, a somewhat ironic casting you might think, given the turn that my professional career took subsequently. And then the following year, as Queen Victoria, which involved a scene with Stanley and Livingston, one of whom, and I forget which he was playing, eventually became my husband. So, as you can see, Leicester uh, has, and both was and is, a momentous place for me. In short, I had a good time. And then, at the age of 20, when I graduated, and all too soon, 
it was over. What was I to do? Much to the relief of my parents, and therefore I can address this part to the parents who are here, because I've been through it myself with my own children now, I decided I had to be a bit more focused. And I read for the bar. I was lucky. Uh, I fell into something which I enjoyed. I worked hard at it. And as a result, I had some fortunate breaks along the way. Others thought that I was quite good. But it did not always look as if that was to be the case. When I started at the bar, as you've heard, women were somewhat of a minority uh, species. Uh, and those that were practicing were really practicing in the area of family law. My clerk thought that was going to be the way I had to go. He sent me off to do an undefended divorce. I lost it. How can one lose an undefended divorce was a source of complete bemusement to my clerk, not to say other members of my chambers. He tried again, my clerk that is, with a different area of law, this time with criminal law. Surely, Miss Patterson, you must be better at that. He obviously had visions of the Martha Costello going back to the 1980s. He sent me off to uh, represent a lady arsonist. Uh, I represented her. I successfully got the sentence um, adjourned for a period of time so that she could demonstrate she was responsible, caring mother for her children. What did she do? She set fire to another building. <laughs> Clearly, criminal law was not going to be my way either. So my early years were a series of false starts. And frankly, planning an environmental law, therefore, was the only thing left for me to do. But it was fun, and I enjoyed my time at it. The Law Commission also is fun. Many of you here may not know, apart from hearing what um, Gordon has said by way of introduction to me, what the Law Commission does. Let me just give you a thought short thumbnail sketch of my last week. I have been on Radio Merseyside, Radio Cornwall, uh, and LBC. The latter, I unexpectedly landed up arguing with Bob Crow about taxes. I was locked in this earlier this week uh, into a room by the Department of Health to read the white paper which came out on social care on Wednesday. And indeed, on Wednesday, I saw the product of one of my reports translated into the draft care and support bill, which is now published for pre-legislative scrutiny, but which hopefully will be on the statute book sometime next year. The point is that one never knows what life is going to throw at you. One has to be resilient. One has to be adaptable, and one has not to be afraid to go for it. All of those qualities will have been contributed to you all as a result of your time here. You will be well equipped for the onward journey. You must remember that you are as good as anyone from anywhere else, and have confidence in moving forward. I thank the university for this honor, which is uh, great indeed, and one which it's fair to say I never expected at all. But most of all, I wish all of you here who are graduating today the greatest of success in your onward careers and have fun in developing them. Thank you very much.